Yeah, we have another Five Nights at Freddy's 2 animatronic encountered in the Five Nights at Freddy's 3's minigames Toy Chica. Now, this one is quite the oddball and pretty much the most creepiest ones actually out of the bunch because she has some very interesting things that we did a lot in the last few years especially with a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's theorists on YouTube that have also speculated in the past and is still going on. Her mini game in FNAF 3 is actually Chica's Party. In FNAF World, it's actually, well, sort of similar. You a cupcake inside the box. One of the many things about Toy Chica is that, one, she actually always loses her beak, whether that's accidentally or even intentionally. And that what gives her the most creepy vibes about her most of all. And once she does that, also her eyes are go missing as well. And just become nothing but black orbs with white pupils in the middle. The missing big part in particular is one of the most fascinating parts. And that's one of the biggest symbolisms about Toy Chica specifically. And it has happened overall with a few other Chica models from the past. Like at the very last page of the Five Nights at Freddy's security logbook. You get to see a FNAF 1 Chica, or in this case, Scrap Chica, if she were ever to be in FNAF 6, which she wasn't. Her beak actually goes missing. Which, by the way, the FNAF 1 Chica has never lost her beak until that time afterwards. Actually, it kind of does make you wonder still, why hasn't Toy Chica been in FNAF 6? Which, by the way, I did do a video back that years ago. And it's not just her. Like, let's take for Glamrock Chica, for example, recently in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach and Security Breach Ruin, along with, with Help Wanted 2. She loses her beak during in the Security Breach game by Gregory, so that Gregory can get a voice box and give it to Glamrock Freddy. But in the process, they both actually end up being in the dump. And throughout all of Security Breach and Security Breach Ruin, plus I wanted to, she still has that missing beak. I'm not, I kid you not. Just what is it that makes the missing beak so special, by the way? Like, what does that actually really represent? Well, first off, there is also another missing beak chica that they get to see in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 minigames while playing as the crying child. You can see that one of the children were playing toy chica and her beak was also missing. But what does the missing beak really symbolize? Supposed to symbolize, you know, like symbolism? Supposed to, like a symbolism of like, you know, a beak that's gone missing, like you have lost something? Or like, terror in your eyes or something like that? Like you just, you can't get over the fact that, you know, this, ch this chicken has lost her beak? Who knows? However, there is one thing I do want to also consider the most. In one of the lines of the Ultimate Custom Night, she actually says this. Where's my beak? Lodged in your forehead, of course. I'm sorry, what? The beak lodged in someone in William Afton's forehead? Why does that uh, kind of sound very familiar? And this actually kind of got me thinking, was it really Mangle who actually caused the bite of 87? Besides the fact that she's considered to be the main antagonist of FNAF 2. But... If you're hearing Toy Chica say that, then does that mean that she was the one who caused the bite of 87 in FNAF 2? Well, there is a few things about her that I actually do consider her to be very freaking deadly. Just by looking at in the character encyclopedia, Toy Chica is cruel and bloodthirsty and can also be weird. Yeah, no freaking kidding. If something like that was actually written in the character encyclopedia, the same thing could have been with Mangle. But they don't say anything about that about Mangle at all in the character encyclopedia. It says nothing. If not, none of them actually even talk about the Bite of 83 in the character encyclopedia at all. Maybe perhaps in one of the security books, but other than that, like, everyone thinks that Mangle was the one. But could Toy Chica actually be the real one who's guilty to do for doing that? Let me know that one in the comments below. As we move on to the next thing about Toy Chica is that there are a few things about her that we, aside from just her missing beak, but also the archetypes that are based on her. Now, as like for every archetype that we've seen, like some of these animatronics have been known to be, as for Chica, well, Henry's main creation. 
maybe not toy chicas perhaps maybe they have maybe he has done it with william afton back in the day but as we all know it was basically this chica the one of the withered chica of fnaf 2 before she was actually withered of course she was actually henry's original creations it was actually was built with you know the mediocre melodies but other than that the only thing about chica herself is that there is something about you know chica's party world now of course that was actually going to be henry's main diner you know, along with the original chica and the mediocre melodies but since when william afton and henry actually decided to combine their restaurants together and called fazbear entertainment that's when everything came together with a few slight changes if you haven't looked at the ultimate timeline with map pad i suggest you probably check it out unless if you don't want to that's fine at least this part about chica or any other chica at least i can agree with but when it comes to toy chica in particularly there is someone who is slightly similar to toy chica and that is funtime chica now funtime chica was actually considered to be a sister location animatronic now years back i saw a video by Razbuski along with the other famous youtube fnaf theorizers which are doggo 8-bit ryan and bazamalam talking about some secret files that have actually been going on in the sister location talking about chica's party world now this is to basically confirm that funtime chica was supposed to be part of you know the sister location as well or to be like a completely different location all around but i feel like they were going to also put like funtime chica as part of the sister location band i'm also have actually theorized about funtime chica herself about you know losing her beak there have been some actually other fan-made models that some people were kind of guessing that maybe this was the kind of model that funtime chica would look like and is very close to toy chica as well i'm not gonna lie like this would have been the most accurate kind of model for toy chica to be honest i wish they could have actually gone for something like that it makes so much sense but i guess they wanted to make it you know kind of somewhat similar to toy chica but just less creepy than it already has been so i guess that's why they kind of didn't want to have like you know the whole loose big situation but speaking about that the the Springlock suit that we're actually in in this location when we're trying to get away from, you know, like the mini reasons or like Ballora or trying to avoid that poisonous gas. You actually notice something about that mask is that one, that could possibly be one of the old models of Funtime Chica. And that's the crazy thing about it. Maybe they did actually come up with a Funtime Chica Springlock Sizzle location suit as an actual animatronic but i feel like that must have got scrapped and must have been like used for like you know costume mode or something like that but still you can get spring locked i mean you could see the face of it as well kind of looks like that it's got like this missing beak situation there like where the heck is the beak you can't even see it the face plates just lift up normally like it usually do but you don't know if the beak is there or not so it kind of feels like that, yes, there was going to be another Funtime Chica, but this must have been the old one. So that's why this version of Funtime Chica in FNAF 6 was then put into the Pizzeria Simulator instead. Also, if you haven't even noticed about the bib on, you may actually have noticed it's called Let's Party, which kind of makes sense as well. That's probably, I bet that's pretty much like either like leading to the fact of, you know, uh, Toy Chica of, you know, Chica's Party World, which actually does make a lot of sense. Maybe it could have been a possibility that, you know, the FNAF, that Toy Chica might also could have been a big part of the Chica's party world. Can you imagine, actually, if there was going to be, like, you know, a, a completely FNAF location that just basically requires just all Chica's? That will be extremely terrifying. But I guess that's what makes Toy Chica so crazy random and yet so special at the exact same time in the most scariest way as possible. But now, consider that all done. Now let's talk about who exactly is Toy Chica saving in her minigame. Well, if I were to have a really good guess to figure out who exactly is Toy Chica saving in her minigame, I would definitely take consideration that it's obviously Bonnie. 
Now, first off, hear me out, okay? This isn't because of any of the freaking shipping that's been going on. And trust me when I tell you, there's been a lot of that. Some of them actually do that for like, you know, for, for the memes or complete stupidity. Or, or actually for like, maybe for even some accurate ones as well. Not gonna lie. Take for Zatch Q37, for example. Now, I kind of figure out that, you know... The shipping between, you know, Bonnie and Toy Chica or any of the animatronics, it does actually make a lot of sense. I mean, someone even actually back in the day made a love um, table or something like that. Like, like it's this one right here that I'm showing to you right now. And this was like, oh, God, it was it was driving me nuts. Uh, look, I don't usually do this kind of thing, but if it were to be, if I were to rearrange that at some point, just with these original animatronics and probably perhaps the FNAF 2 animatronics, they would probably go like that, but I guess it makes sense to the reason why that, you know, Toy Chico would definitely save the original Bonnie from FNAF 1. Maybe it could possibly be love or lovely relationships, I don't freaking know, but far out, they're kids in an animatronic suit. So, why on earth? I don't know if even Scott Cawthon has really taken that into consideration. I mean, he's probably very... I think he's aware of it. I think he's very aware of it. But I don't think he will probably go... Really go that far with taking it into consideration. Aside the fact that he actually did some very interesting things in... Uh, Freddy in Space number 3. If you, if you can remember that. Also, the soul of Bonnie specifically is actually Jeremy. Now, you're probably guys all wondering, it should have actually been Gabriel. Well, you know what? I'll take this one as well, actually, for saying that, you know, Jeremy is actually the soul of Bonnie. And that's fine by me. I mean, look it up yourselves if you want. If you don't think that's right, you think it might be Gabriel instead. But to, you know what? I'll just be sticking to Jeremy. And the amount of times that the name Jeremy has been put, like first off, the Jeremy Night Guard in FNAF 2, the child Jer Jeremy in the original children's incident, and also like Jeremy in, you know, FNAF Help Wanted number one, it's absolutely absurd. But to be honest, I definitely feel like it kind of makes sense if that were to be the case. You know, I'll, I'll take it. Je like Bonnie as Jeremy would make sense. And of course... When it comes to the symbolization of those two being together as like maybe just like a love kind of relationship i don't usually say uh, i don't usually look into that much but with the amount of things that that's been going on it doesn't matter how crazy it is but you know what it i will probably i will probably take that one but it makes sense though if accurately enough that bonnie is being saved by toy chica that wouldn't surprise me Plus, it will make a lot of sense to me as well. So, yeah, I guess that's it for that one. So, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you really think that Toy Chica is actually saving uh, Bonnie in this situation? And do you still, and do you actually think that Bonnie is actually, you know, is if Jeremy is actually the soul of Bonnie or, Gabe, or Gabriel could be the soul of Bonnie? You let me know in the comments. And what do you know? And let me know your other thoughts about specifically about, you know, Chica's Toy Chica's missing beaks and all the other missing beaks from other to from other Chica archetypes, and also about the whole situation with Chica's party world because those things were interesting back in the day, and it still is to this very day. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next theory. I feel like this one, the next theory that I'm going to talk about, will be the best one, and it's actually my favorite.